Listen, man, I got a lot of questions. Um, uh, I know you love TV, so I'm just going to throw out there. Uh, what's the thing right now that you can't live without on television? What do you Andor. Keep? Okay, so Andor. we're on the yeah, we're on the same page. Andor is the best thing on TV. It's the best Star Wars series there has been. I'm obsessed with it. Uh, I I watch each episode. I'm like, I cannot believe how good this show is and how much it captures the spirit of Star Wars without featuring any iconic Star Wars characters. I've been saying to everyone, because I, I do think Andor is the best thing on television, that it is, even if you took the Star Wars out of it, it would be the best show on television. It just happens yes. to... It just happens to have Star Wars. Yes, the the I, I nothing prepared me for the uh, the high quality of the show. I mean, I I love Mandalorian and um and and the other Star Wars shows, but this is just this is next level good. I completely agree. And by the way, I'm sure it's the same with you. When they announced Andor, um, I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. maybe yeah, this might be okay. Like, I don't know if I care. And now I'm I'll like, check it out. Yeah. Now I'm like, this is the fucking best thing on TV. Like, yeah, and I'm and I'm so happy because usually a lot of these series, there's like six or eight episodes. This one, I think there's like 12 or something in the first season. So it's like, it feels long. Like it feels generous. Like we're getting a lot of time with it and they're already doing a second season. So yeah, obsessed. Yeah, we're on the same page. Okay, so in an emergency, um, something happens in your house. I don't know where you live. What's the Smurfs item that you are grabbing to save? Uh, it's the green surprise bag Smurf that Kit got me at Christmas. It's extremely rare. It's worth a lot of money. And uh, it was a, just a very special gift. Uh, and I think that would be the first one that I grabbed. But let's be clear, I would take as much as I could. Right, of course. Um, listen, you do. you have done a lot. You have sat where I'm sitting many times. How weird is it for you to be on where you are right now and like doing hours of press? Um, I'm just I'm just curious what it's like. Weird. So incredibly weird. I'm glad you asked that. Um, it's 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 a bit of a mind. You know what? Uh, I'm much more comfortable in your we're sitting where you're sitting, asking the questions um, and sort of being in control. This is new territory for me. Yeah. Um, did they make you do media training? Did you want to? I didn't do media training. Um, it crossed my mind, but you know, at the same time, I did some press when uh, the book came out, so I had some experience talking about this uh, subject matter. Um, and also, my concern about like media training is I don't want to get inside my head too much. I don't want to have like rehearsed sound bites. I I want to come to this as naturally as possible because as someone who interviews people for a living, those to me are the best interviews. You can tell when someone is coming off a little too polished, a little too rehearsed. Uh, and I didn't want to bring that energy to this. You you know also what it's like when you ask a question and you're getting a completely different answer. You're like, what what the what just happened? Right. Yeah. You know. Um. So you obviously um wrote the book. Did you ever at any point, did this is your whole life story, did you at any point think about writing a, the first draft of the script or did you say, like, I, I don't want to do that? No, it crossed my mind. Like we all options were considered and and absolutely I, I, I thought about it. And these were conversations that I had with my creative partners on this with Jim Parsons and Michael Showalter. And I think we all agreed at the end of the day that we were excited to see what uh, new writers could bring to this story and, you know, and make it cinematic. Um, and uh, I'm so glad that we did, but I will say that I was very involved in the process every step of the way. Uh, it was a very collaborative process. So it's not like I just, you know, washed my hands of it after I optioned the book and walked away and let other people make the movie. I I was very hands-on um, and uh, and Michael Showalter uh, made it a really safe collaborative environment. Yeah, one of the things that I love about the film is that it's just an honest relationship. It's, it's an honest story and it's never Hollywoodizing anything. Um, can you sort of talk about the fact that they, they, you know, it, it, um, I guess that aspect of it, that it's not going for the big third act craziness or whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's being true to the book, which I think is important and, and something that I stressed from the beginning. You know, there were certain aspects of the book, like the DNA of the book that I wanted the movie to capture. And, and we everybody was sort of on the same page. And, and one of those things is relationships are messy. People are imperfect. And uh 
I, there was, there's no value in, you know, sort of softening those hard edges or in sugarcoating aspects of that, because that's reality. And I think it, it, what, it's what makes the book and the movie ultimately relatable. I know you were on set basically every day. I can't imagine what it's like to sit there and watch people like your life right there in front of you. So can you sort of talk about uh, that aspect of it? Well, there were moments that were absolutely surreal, especially, you know, there were some sequences that were very close to uh, real life, including the the deck scene at, at the, towards the end of the movie r- really captured the, the spirit of how that experience was. For the most part, though, it, it wasn't hard uh, in the way I think maybe a lot of people think. Like, I w- never felt like I was watching my life being replayed in front of my eyes. I knew we were making a movie. I knew this wasn't a documentary. And I also knew that these incredible actors were going to be bringing their own, uh, putting their own spin on these roles and making them their own. So I never felt like Jim was like mimicking me or impersonating me. And the same thing with Ben and Kit. They were creating almost these these new people um, that were based on real people. Talk a little bit about the, the title. Spoiler alert! Uh, I, it's a great title, and I'm just curious uh, with the book. Obviously, uh, how did you decide on it? And also, um, was it always going to be the title for the movie? So the the title of the book came about halfway through writing the book, and it it, it hit me like the best kind of light bulb going off in my brain. Uh, it just plays on a, a number of levels. One is uh, the it's cheeky, you know, it's sort of silly and sarcastic, which is very much the spirit of the book and was the spirit of my relationship is and is my sense of humor. But also spoilers, that's my business. That's my I built my career uh, on spoilers. And it just felt very on brand to, you know, find a way to work that into the title. Was it always going to be the title of the movie? Yeah, it was. I, um, there was never any question about uh, changing the title, although the title of the movie is just spoiler alert, where, the you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, it leaves off a couple of key words, although I think most people are able to do the math. On that note, I'm just going to say congrats on the movie, and I'm glad we both love Andor as much as we do. Oh, thank you so much. 